Experiment three. In this week's lab, we're going to take a break from using probes and analyze osmosis. Some of the things we'll be doing this week is practicing uh, editing examples of scientific writing. So last week you should have read a scientific paper. We can talk about what scientific writing looks like and we can edit scientific writing. We will conduct an experiment on the effect of solute concentration on the rate of diffusion. We will use uh, an assay. Uh, so we'll set up a series of samples and create a standard curve using osmosis in a potato. And using our data, we will solve for the unknown concentration of a variable. So we'll have a container of solution of unknown concentration, a sugar solution and we will solve for the concentration of sucrose in that solution. We will practice scientific writing skills uh, by cleaning up vague statements and we will talk a lot about avoiding sidestepping the responsibility of the student to interpret their data. So last week I mentioned it's very important to know the difference between explaining and describing your data. Describing your data is just saying what happened. But as a scientist, you must explain your data. Why did it happen? And not superficially, but why did it happen at the molecular level? Were proteins denatured? Were, were proteins tolerant at, at a specific concentration of ethanol, let's say, and then denatured as concentrations increase, causing beta cyanin to leak? Or, or is there some other explanation? But you must describe the data as well as explain it. This week's lab deals with the properties of, of the motion of molecules. Um, diffusion would not be possible without the movement of molecules. That's very important to understand, to grasp before you can understand how diffusion works. It is not magic. It works because water molecules, as well as anything dissolved in water, are constantly moving and randomly moving. Because of that, like in the example we see here, so we see on the upper left a container of water with a membrane. The membrane is permeable. It allows the dye, maybe food coloring, to pass through. If you have a bunch of food coloring over here and none over here, but everything is moving, chances are some of the food coloring will move across the membrane. Now notice that at the end of this process we end up with equal amounts of coloring on, on both sides of the membrane. But that doesn't mean that diffusion stops. So we can see that as one molecule drifts across, chances are another one is coming back the other way. So that is equilibrium. So in diffusion, items diffuse from areas of high concentration to areas of lower concentration. Once equilibrium is reached, that does not mean the molecules stop moving. It just means they're spread out equally. You can see a similar uh, thing taking place here where you have a, a different solute on each side of a membrane. And a high concentration of the purple ones on the right, a high concentration of the yellow ones on the left, and eventually they spread out till they're more or less equally distributed. That is diffusion. Osmosis works on a similar principle, except we're talking about the movement of water across the membrane rather than dissolved substances. So in this U-shaped tube, we have water, equal amounts of water, and we have dissolved substances. There's more solute, a high concentration of solute on the right, and a low concentration on the left. Now in this case, we also have a membrane, but the membrane in this example is too small for the solute to pass through. And what happens is the water molecules are in motion. They can cross the membrane, but the dissolved solute cannot. Now the water molecules cross the membrane and they form hydration shells with the solute. 
so they stick to the solute. They're stuck to this great big solute molecule, and they are now occupied. They are stuck. They can't come back again. So the water molecules cross, but they get stuck to something very big, and they cannot drift back across again. Meanwhile, some water molecules on this side are able to cross through, but there's a lot more free water molecules on the left side of this diagram than on the right because there's less dissolved solute on the left. So the water molecules aren't stuck to as much stuff. They can go through the membrane to the right, but a lot of them get stuck when they move to the right. They get stuck to those solutes, those large solute molecules, and they can't come back across. And what happens in this case is over time, water moves to the right, and not much moves back to the left. So you end up changing the amount of, uh, of volume in this tube from the left to the right. So we now have equal quantities of free water molecules, water molecules that are not stuck to anything on both sides of that membrane. Now in today's experiment, you're going to uh, produce a standard curve, meaning you're going to take a series of known sucrose concentrations and you're going to place a potato in those concentrations and measure how its mass changes before and after incubating in those sucrose concentrations. You will make a scatter plot using that information and that is a standard curve. The utility of this curve is that you can now test an unknown concentration of sucrose, one that you don't know the concentration of, and then using the equation of the line uh, you can then predict based on the change in potato mass you can predict what the unknown concentration was. So if you know the concentration of some standards you can make a standard curve. So the standards are known solutions. You make a standard curve. You use a best fit line. You can find the equation of that line. And then uh, you can solve the equation for the unknown variable. So in this case, y refers to the y-axis, and x refers to the x-axis. You can solve for y or x, depending on which is known and which is unknown, and determine the solution. So in this case, with the unknown sucrose solution, you will know what the change in mass is. So you'll know y, but you will not know x, which is the sucrose concentration. So you'll solve for x and determine the unknown concentration. We'll also be looking at Elodea, a aquatic plant under a microscope. So you'll get some, uh, some microscope handling tips today in lab and you'll look at how various concentrations of salt solutions affect those cells. Make sure to look for those cell walls, uh, the chloroplasts you should be able to see, and you may not be able to see the vacuole, but the vacuole, just like the one we tested in beets with the ethanol, the vacuole in the Elodea plants is a very large membrane-bound organelle that contains uh, liquid, and it will become dehydrated or or swollen based on uh, the, the concentration of, of uh, solute you place it in. So in a hypertonic solution or a hypotonic solution, uh, the plant will respond differently. All right, have a good lab this week.